Okay, folks. Um, real time is 7:05. That wall time is 6:59. <laughs> Take your choice. We'll, we'll go ahead and get started, understanding that some more people may filter in. So my name is Saul Greenberg, and I'm representing uh, being up here being a member of the Economic Sustainability Commission, which is a commission out of the uh, Village Council. And I'm just going to read you briefly the, the definition of the Economic Sustainability Commission before I say a couple of other things. Mm -hmm. So the, the commission provides information, which is part of what we're doing tonight, is gathering information, and makes recommendations which um, will enter into down the road. We'll have another one of these community meetings that will be publicized when we'll report out on the information that we've gathered and then start moving toward recommendations. We won't have recommendations at that point in time because that will be another point for community input around the information that we gathered tonight plus what was put out in boxes around town and we have some of those responses and what people responded to online. So this is a two-part process. Tonight is open listening, non-judgmental, everything people say, say goes up on the newsprint. We type it up. We try to uh, maybe collate it and put some thematic sense to it and then we have another meeting where everybody, the public's invited and we report out on what we've gathered and hopefully have been able to organize in some fashion into themes. So the commission's job is to uh, provide information and make recommendations to council regarding economic development for the village of Yellow Springs, identify primary opportunities for economic development in the village, and strategies to support these efforts and facilitating a forum, which is part of what we're doing here, for incubating ideas and networking among diverse groups working on economic development in the village. In terms of how much economic development tonight's discussion and the follow-up discussion leads to, totally remains to be seen. We don't have any idea. I don't know if anybody has any idea. Um, so I've identified myself uh, being here as a member of the commission, and I'd like to go around and have some, well, we don't have all that many people here, so we could just kind of rub down the roads and everybody could just mention their name and in what capacity they happen to be here in the tonight. Why don't we start with you, Henry? Henry Myers, and I'm a member of the uh, Economic Sustainability Commission also. Diane Chibister, Yellow Springs News. What was catch you, Jerry, because you're just up front and we're going to move around. So just your name and in what capacity you're, you've come tonight. <laughs> Jerry Sims as a citizen. <laughs> okay, I'm not Thank you. Uh, Susan Jennings, Economic Sustainability Commission. Lucien Ali, I'm also part of the commission. Robert Connor, I'm just a resident in the village who uh, thinks he has an idea that will answer a lot of questions. Uh, Sounds good to me. David <laughs> Turner, I'm resident of the village. I'm uh, Hollister, I'm in the village. You know, Palau, yeah. part of the commission. Brian Hausch, I'm uh, the council liaison for the commission. Laura, why don't we start with your newer way up? Laura Ellison, I'm with Village Mediation, I'm here as a facilitator. Wayne Kramer, Mediation Program. Sarah Wallace, Village Mediation. Dale Hotelling, long time member of Yellow Yes, you are. Marianne McQueen, Village Council. Wayne Goulden, just resident. Susan Gardner, filmmaker. And staff. Carlo Hambaburu, Village of. Also, Village Council. Okay. You just came in. You just oh. introduced yourself. Hi, Base Village Manager. Yay. And I'm here. Sam Obiorn, former and long time resident, or former resident and native. Yeah, so the question is have you been here longer than long? 
No. Uh, <laughs> yes. No. <laughs> we'll fight about it. Can you hold it somewhere else now? Late 50s. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> okay. So we're going to break out into small groups. Obviously, there are more commission members, council members, and facilitators than people who came uh, defining themselves tonight as residents. But we'll break out into a small discussion. We can have one discussion here. Open to suggestions on how many people will. What group? Maybe one facilitator. That sounds good to me. And the questions um, that we that we'll use as um, guiding questions for discussion. Not that, I mean, this is not a uh, essay. This is not a fill in the blank kind of test, but just to get some discussion going. Is what community values do you think those 35 acres for me, known as CBE? should uh, reflect and what, and what service of community values should that exist. So that would be question number one regarding community values relative to the 35 acres. And the second question would be what community needs would you see that land fulfilling? And then the third question gets a little bit more nitty gritty. What would you like to see or not see on that land? So these questions we can repeat uh, when we break out into discussion. And again, these are just kind of to guide the discussion. Uh, we're just going to try to capture whatever is said. It's, it's what's similar in a lot of people's minds to a brainstorming session. It's non-judgmental. Anything goes. We listen, we talk, we write it down. And who knows, over a period of time, maybe it, it, we have some themes that develop into something useful. Okay, so um, physically we have all this space we can use, but um, can we have this oh, okay. I'm sorry, because did, did you just, just come in after all that go around? <laughs> you no, no, I just, I just wondered if it would be useful to get the discussion going if the committee could talk about some of the, your own brains warning. I don't know if that, to, to me, that might actually help get the ball rolling. I think we'd rather actually not purposely not do that. And, and but I don't want anybody to you know, have any suspicions. We actually have not talked about what we think should happen. What we've talked a lot about was just publicizing this event, putting the boxes out, gathering information online, when we would meet, where we meet, who the facilitators would be with now. A lot of time actually playing this event and purposely avoided that discussion. Which is fine with me. <laughs> okay, so when you're, you're already setting up a, an area here, do you want to just take it from the front of the room? Or do you want to go around? Um, do you want to know what the question is? We'll start out with the first question. and Sarah are uh, facilitators and members of the Growth Mediation Program, and then we let them take it from here. I have another process question. I guess it's for council. Um, I think that the Growth Mediation Program was supposed to just listen. Yes. I mean, especially now, since all of us are here. Uh -huh. No, but it is a public meeting. Can't we can't talk with you? No. <laughs> no, the object was for us to listen. All the listen, and let the public speak. Right, and it, and it really ha wasn't advertised um, the way meetings are supposed to be advertised, I don't think. So now that you're all settled in your seats and really comfortable, can we get all the residents in the front because it's your input we want, okay. and all the council people and commission members a little further back? <laughs> I think it's really council members who should probably be 
citizen? I, I just was thinking and move that around because commission members and council members get a chance to look at this stuff a lot. And you guys, when you're here once. <clears throat> we really want to make sure we capture everything you, you want to say. So the first question, um, we're going to go around in a brainstorming fashion. We'll just go across the whole room and we'll keep doing that until we think we're running out of ideas, new and different ideas. Um, if you agree with a previous idea, just say I agree with that one, put a star by it, you know, and we'll know that. Um, so with that, Don, what community values do you think should inform the use of this property? Most home grown businesses. Home grown businesses. Want to write for me since you were in writing for you? We'll come back. We've got two. Um, green space is one. <clears throat> and the second one is uh, inclusive decision making. Okay. What's the second one? Inclusive decision making. Okay. Okay. Um, on your values, I, I noticed here that one of the things that the village has is its values is to reduce the carbon footprint and uh, have sound uh, economic and ecological problems. I, I think that a wind farm on that property uh, would accomplish most uh, of okay. the needs. For, but, we'll yeah. do that against what would you like to see on the property part? Wind farm. But what yeah, values should we use? Well, the values that are already stated. The village, the, the council values. To reduce the carbon footprint. Mm -hmm. okay. That's great. Mm -hmm. There was a second question. Yeah, reduce carbon footprint. And what was the uh, second part of that? The other value here is to encourage sound ecological practices. Sound ecological practices. Okay, great. Uh, to underline my neighbor's observation uh, regarding open space, align that, we'll start with that, and, uh, and uh, community collaborative decision making, democracy, I guess. Um, and in the same, again, in the same word, maybe sustainability, that's sort of a zip word. Okay. <coughs> oh. um, I have more like a question. Is it clear that we own the land and we can do with it whatever we want? don't really know the answer to that. <coughs> what, what was the question? Yes, we, are. So we own the land and can do whatever we want. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So we own the land, that doesn't mean we can do whatever we want. Whatever we can agree on. There are covenants attached to it. So nothing? Yes, and the covenants are still there. So what does that mean? There are some some restrictions, you can't build a big box retail store, any retail has to be uh, it, it part of a business that's producing on-site, it can only be on-site retail, that kind of thing. No housing. No, so, uh, no housing. So not anything we want. Any comments besides that? Uh -huh. We'll come back around. Mm -hmm. um, I would echo the inclusive decision making. Decision making. We'll come back around. Yeah, yeah, no, green space and inclusiveness. Okay. Right. Mm -hmm. Is that, is that correct? No housing? Right. Correct. Okay. Or, or is that a covenant that can be changed? It's a covenant, covenant, I guess. Can covenants be changed? It's a long process, but that's can be changed. Uh, reduce carbon footprint and encourage sound equity. Okay. And sustainability. We're, we're getting some convergence here early. Any comment? Inclusive decision making and green space. Okay. Any input? Uh, well, I, I get nervous when I hear community values. Okay. I, mean, I just do. Because we all have different values. Right? And I'm not sure how one ever would arrive at a community value, you know, other than some kind of an election or something. 
So I, I don't know what to say about that. Um, okay. I mean, it, to me, it, it, if it can be made useful in some fashion, you know, then we can maybe use it. But if we can't, then let it alone. I mean, my goodness, it has to be productive. Some fashion. A productive asset. Yeah. Okay. So your values are what we're trying to get here. You know, well, my, I'm, I'm a practical man. Okay. <laughs> a productive asset. Yeah, productive asset. I like, I like practical. Yeah. Two. Oh, we're just listeners. Uh, Very you just too. arrived. Right. <laughs> Jerry. I'm just seven. I'm just catching okay. up. And these are commission. Well, you know, uh, like okay. you said, they all live here for everyone. Question: What can you advise you on this topic? Yeah. If you want to think about it a minute, we'll start all over again with Don. Probably as a vote. Well, only that I I endorse all these others, and I assume those as givens. Therefore, let's not have people drive to work somewhere else. Let's host homegrown business. <coughs> okay. That's part of the uh, forest. Or at least employment for locals. Employment for locals. Anything else? I like to reduce the footprint and encourage the sound ecological process. Okay. And Still. employment. And employment. Got it. Uh, I think many uh, of those overlap. Uh, when I said reduce the carbon footprint, that's certainly sustainability in my mind and the ecological practices and su sustainability. I think mean, they're together. I actually think all, most of those things mentioned there uh, complement one another. Mm -hmm. a good, good observation. Mm -hmm. so what we like to see is called convergence. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Small list. Uh, I would say preserve agricultural land. Preserve the asset of arable soil. Okay. I think uh, what I've not seen up there is uh, I think the stability of the community as a whole, whole which depends on uh, a tax base you know, to be able to continue to sustain the uh, government and our uh, schools. So whatever is there it would be nice to, to consider in terms of our financial uh, viability for the community. It's financial viability for the community? Yeah. yeah. Um, I don't know if this is the time, but if we do something, I would like to see something that is basic, like basic facilities, basic infrastructure, and no more than that, and then let people grow businesses or whatever it is, but not put a lot of money into it with well, a long term investment. Money. Put a little money and let, you know, someone else, the private market perhaps, do something with it. So in terms of a value statement, would that be something like small, Government investment? Small and basic government investment. Infrastructure. Okay. Financial uh, liability. Star on that. Star by the tax base. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, 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 another star in the financial viability. I mean, that's what I mean by productive. I mean, as much as we might not like it, money does make the world go round. Uh, the you know, tax basis. Anybody else? I like the financial viability too. Okay. One more star there. And so we were going to do a. a uh, little technique to try and get some convergence, but these are some convergent ways, so maybe we'll move on to question two. Can I ask a question? Sure. This is not the night, I'm talking about. What was the question? What was the question? What was the Okay. 
So we've just gone through this question. Question two, what community needs could this property serve? And this sort of gets back to, well, this is just that question. So let's start through the same process. Start with. Oh, start in the back. Start somewhere else. Did I hear that? Yeah, start in the back. All right, we'll start somewhere else. Amanda, do you have any input on it? Um, what community needs could this property serve? I think there's decidedly, I know it's always <coughs> the hot button issues since I moved here 20 years ago, but there's always a need for more places for people to live. And while I know this is a CBE, but people are talking about arable soil and things like that, I'm just going to put that out there. I mean, if it's either not necessarily housing, but something to consider. There's that much room. And everyone's into tiny housing. Who knows? There's there's the potential for people are always looking for somewhere to live here in town. Okay. Um, Susan. Uh, Bill. Any input this question? <coughs> Are you asking me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't have anything at this time. Mm -hmm. Thanks for asking. Oh. Um, I think it serves as, as sort of like the, the tempo. It sets the tempo for the town. And, and is that a need? No, but it's something that that space does. When we come upon that space, we get, you know, we are approaching. We are <coughs> about to enter this new space. It's a transition zone from a very agricultural area into a uh, a rural ur a rural small town. So it's going to provide a gateway. A gateway. It's a transition zone. Okay. Carlos, anything on this question? I mean, I guess opportunities for you know local businesses. Opportunities for businesses. Sorry. Uh, I think I would put a star on two places if I can. The businesses and the housing. They're both the, uh, I go back to the tech and, and the housing. So I would start the housing. Let's get into the business. We'll get it. Yeah. I'll go for that star that's on the transition. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Not an error. I, I, I really I'm going to start it. <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> oh, well, considering this Arnowitz property that's not coming up for auction, um, I'm going to, you know, I'm really more and more concerned about Greenbelt. Okay. That would protect ourselves. Yes. Okay. Since housing has been introduced, uh, mine was um, really, really affordable housing. <laughs> Affordable house. Underline. Really affordable. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> really, really affordable. Now we're back to you. <clears throat> I know of three businesses that expanded out of town because there was no place for them to, they thought they could expand in town. I would say place for business local. Homegrown businesses to expand. Homegrown businesses to expand. Give you a theme here of Tom's mm -hmm. comments. <coughs> Anything else? Oh, okay. Let's go. Let's go. I was going to. I, I had uh, beautiful farmland. I think that's one of the things that it provides currently. And I'd also star green belt. I'm allowed a second star in this to make a transition zone. Yeah, well, I've got mm -hmm. green belt. Yeah. Uh, opportunities for business. And I'm going to support Bob with his um, wind farm. Okay, mm -hmm. on this one. And uh, I think that 
whether one puts financial liability or <coughs> income, the revenue source for the for the village that is stable. Increased revenue source. Yeah, so increased mm -hmm. revenue. Mm -hmm. Um, I would say this falls under the green belt sort of uh, side of it. Um, I think uh, that it may be short-sighted to think of this as sort of a development opportunity, that this is a zoning question, and that if we seize upon this as a, a source of a revenue stream, um, I think we are violating a principle of public property and public <coughs> asset. I wish I could encapsulate this into a single line, but I'm sorry. I'm not. That it is illusory and, and short-sighted to think of this as just another development opportunity where we can put, say, public housing, some public, even, a, even public housing, um, but uh, which would fall into that category, but I guess it's not zoned for that, so correct me if I'm wrong, we can't Presently, unless it's rezoned, we can't put housing on it, right? Did, did you just say that, Patty? Unless the, I believe the covenants right now prohibit housing. Okay, so we're left with some sort of commercial development, something that would be an incubator, something that's great, you know. But I frankly think that that these are the things that should should be left to the uh, private sector, um, and that we can rezone. Uh, property if we feel like we need more commercial property for, for small businesses to grow. Mm -hmm. I just, it's just, uh, if we want to have a cooperative, uh, you know, a, a, a community farm or use it for the, its ideal purpose, which is agricultural land, which would preserve the open space, that's fine. But I'm, I recoil at the notion of, of more uh, foundation uh, going in there. Mm -hmm. I do. Let me, let me put the caveat on there that if the public encounters with chooses covenants can be changed or lifted from the property, but at this current time. Right, of course. <coughs> right, we can always resume that. So to try and capture that more completely, it's, uh, community need could be just to maintain the green space. Right, right. Or, or activities which would facilitate businesses, but would not sort of give homes to businesses. Uh, not, not have it be another office park or a science park or education park or all these are the other things that were fronted. To get Some way to use the use it productively, but in a um, <coughs> a very green sense. Yeah. I don't, I don't know how to say that in the other words. Non-built development. <laughs> I like to see maybe a master plan in which uses are included, like housing if possible, businesses, some space for green space, maybe some farming. With that in place, then the government can put the pipes in, you know, dig up the land, put the pipes, sewer, water, electricity, whatever it is. And that will be the end for me. Buildings will be up to whoever thinks this is going to be useful, profitable, they should build. We so should not build. It's kind of a mixed-use master plan. Right. It's uh, the kind of thing you'd like to see that property developed into. Right. Mm -hmm. Repair the, the infrastructure so that then whoever feels this is a good business, then they can invest into a housing or business or even a park. But they not us build that. We have a treatment plant and a water plant that needs the money. So. The, maybe the money should be limited of what is done on this property and then let other actors, you know, take the plan <coughs> and, and build. Okay. I'm not sure we captured that with this <laughs> Involve a different process. And what I meant was going to put was like limited village public involvement. Right, limited right. investment in infrastructure, the kind of thing that the private sector cannot do. Like a multifaceted private use of some kind. Sure. Right. 
in the context of, a, of what I heard you say, because I'm a planner, what I heard you say was develop a master plan for the site that would encompass a lot of different uses. Right. <coughs> and then see how that plan develops over time. You, you need a plan. You need to harmonize different possible uses. uses. Then, see to me, a lot can be done by just putting the infrastructure in place. Right. And then let, let this develop on its own. Okay. And that one, Sarah, can that be moved up somehow higher? So maybe a little. Why don't you put it higher? Or even over here? Put it on top of Stand on a chair. I was thinking about putting it over the first one since we're. Oh, I mean, we can stick it on the bottom one. Here, 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 we we'll just put the three things together. I mean, when it's done, we can stick it on the bottom of one of these and everybody can see everything together. But it's challenging to. I've worked it on chess board of ours. It's a couple of people that need to put it on the other. <laughs> yeah, that would be good. Okay. Thank you. Right? Thank you. That help? <laughs> okay. So we've got one and two pretty much. Any more input for this? How about three? And we'll start in the middle. Well, I think I'd like to see it stay green. And um, yeah, I think the, with the arm of its property being open possibly for development, that um, it would be wise to um, hold back on any kind of um, immediate permanent development plans. I'd like to see um, multi-use, um, Small business, outdoor small business, incubator, nonprofit, project space, um, various community uses that would allow it to stay green and could, it could be rehab to uh, agriculture or it could go into any other use we wanted in the future. But I don't like the restrictive covenant that it's under now, which um, essentially hands it over to a private developer and allows it to be used for. Um, so-called economic development, which may or may not be in keeping with the vision of what most people in the community would like to see. So what you don't want to see, let me, let me try just, to capture that. I don't want to see the, um, the CBE project. Commercial, traditional office park or uh, yeah, I, I, it's our uh, Western Gateway, uh, and just like our Northern <laughs> Gateway where there's now agricultural land, I would like to see that space represent the values of the community and tell people visually and symbolically who we are when they come into our community. And I, don't, I hope we aren't a, a, a low-end business park. Okay. We I would like to put a star on wind farm um, and maybe even solar farm sustainable energy because I think that I don't know if it made it I see sustainability over here I see productive and those two things marry very well and still it remains the gateway it says Yellow Springs is a sustainable community and it also provides some income at some level for our community as we, if we can put it back into the grid and also makes us sustainable in the long run in the event that the grid fails. We have our own local grid. Well, I mean, I would like to see it personally, I'd like to see it stay green space. Okay. I would like, you know, and, and I would say that there ought to be a fairly high bar to make it something else. Okay. A fairly high bar. Fairly high bar. Yeah. Well, that'd be some, something pretty, something either be very lucrative you know, just tax base could be help with that and all that, but or something that really is a, a benefit to the community itself. Okay. But it had to be a fairly high bar, right? Okay. Any round? <clears throat> um, two 
fill out my affordable housing, what I'd like is 10% of it, um, say along Eden Road, to be uh, condos, viable small condos for single parents. Okay. <laughs> I would really like to see um, most of it stay green or some mix of um, solar and green space. Nothing beyond that. Okay. One of the uh, advantages of a wind farm is that the ground underneath is usable for whatever you want to use it. You can put agricultural things there, you can have uh, <coughs> uh, so grow things, you can raise animals below it, and if you want, you can build housing under it, you can build businesses under it. In other words, it opens up all possibilities and at the same time creates a possible income that's stable, it reduces the carbon footprint. In other words, there's almost nothing negative about it. It also creates, as you enter in the village, something that is iconic for a village that produces its own energy without pollution. So wind farm, uh, kind of parentheses maybe, allows other uses as well? allows other uses. Mm -hmm. Is that captured on the phone? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, I missed that. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll pass. Okay. Dave? Oh, I tried being wrong. I'll pass. <laughs> Good luck. Why not? <laughs> I missed a couple of comments. I would put a star by stay green there. That was just my number one hope. But <clears throat> I have a new um, comment that I know is on there that I hope everybody can agree with. I'd like to see whatever plan we come up with that it goes to a vote of the town. And it's not just decided by a room of 20 people that were interested and available yeah. tonight to come together. That we, whatever the plan is, whatever the proposal is, as it did previously, it was defeated. Um, that it goes to a referendum of the entire town before a bulldozer goes out there and tears up that beautiful property. I think there's, there's opportunities within the limits of Yellow Springs to remodel and rehab places that are that aren't functioning well or abandoned or, or could be used better or the space that's right in the middle of the town off of Zini Avenue that used to be the clinic that got raised to, to build something there in the confines of the town and keep this marvelous, beautiful entry into Yellow Springs, the transition the way it is. So I would hope everybody would agree with that, that we whatever it is that we, we vote on it as a town. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> Okay. Anything else for these three charts? I, I would have to, I would just want to re before, endorse my neighbor's observation that, that it needs to be within the context of a, a wider plan. I think that was very key, and I think that's something that speaks for really all of our development. We may have a, a brand spanking new zoning code, but <coughs> The vision thing, as far as zoning goes, I'm not seeing it, and, and we need to put somebody on that task. Okay. Well, it seems to me that the council, for the last 20, 30 years, has wanted it to be a green space because there's been no serious movement that I've seen on any kind of master plan for anything. I think we need to come up with a plan for something. We're going to need more revenue for providing the taxes to do the things we need to do from some sources. We're going, to get, we're going to get another million dollars a year in the next 10 years or so. That means at $10 an hour, about 3,000 more jobs of people working in the community. Or, or if you want to make it easier, we need 667 jobs for people making $100,000 a year working in the community. Neither one of those things are reasonable. So we need to come up with a better plan for generating the revenue we, we need to run the village to pay the streets and build the wind farm or plow the green space or whatever. Whatever you want to do with that, we need to make some decisions, council members. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
everybody get that? <laughs> no. Well, I'll just <coughs> pipe in that so far at the tax levels people are willing to pay, houses don't pay for their cost. <coughs> Businesses do. And grass doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> Unless you're farming the grass. <laughs> yeah, but just the, the kind of grass that's there now isn't going to get it. Even more input. Going once, well, going twice. Amy? Um, you know, I just always thought that um, it might. I like to see something that's kind of more lots of little, that doing things like um, uh, tech lofts or the work lofts, things that, you know, could create, you know, things that could create some, you know, because we need incubation, we need lots of ideas, because a few of them are going to work, a couple of them are going to work. So act as an incubator for... Yeah, I mean, and that's one of the first things that when I first heard about the CD is that that's the sort of thing that people were talking about. They were talking about multi-use, they were talking about worker co-ops, and you know, for me, I don't think this stuff starts happening until you create anything. Okay. Anything else? I think we got it. So. Yeah. Um, so what's going to happen is all this will be typed up. It looks as if, as, as Len pointed out, we're already developing some cohesiveness. So in terms of uh, capturing themes, it makes our job a little bit easier, but there are a lot of different themes, a lot of stars, <laughs> a variety of items. So we're not going to throw any of it away. Uh, all of it will be typed up and it will still be available for whenever, because of everything that's going on around town right now, uh, we originally had a follow-up date for another meeting where we would report out, but that's gotten pushed off the agenda. So we we'll have to follow the publicized uh, follow-up. So can you want to say more about that process? Um, I can in a minute. I guess I want to make sure, since we have some time, uh, just to open it up to make sure that sure everyone's got the chance back to up. make sure we had everything. And you know, maybe there are, are questions or comments that don't fit into the three questions yeah. that people would like to ask. Anything we that needs to be added to this for further deliberation, future deliberation. One thing I, I would like to uh, just point out, we've been doing a survey here with, with some boxes where people could put in uh, suggestions around the village and then a, a something about the monkey. That's <laughs> <laughs> but, but anyway, well, we, we have about 40 suggestions is my understanding, maybe, maybe more now, uh, that, that's put in. So, you know, there's what, uh, a few dozen here, so there'll be a whole bunch more thrown in the mixture, so, you know, if, just want to let everyone know, if the possibility comes that, you know, there were these things out of the wild, such as one of them that, uh, that was occasionally talked about was a marijuana factory going, you know, don't, don't be, do, be too surprised if, you know, there, there's a whole bunch of, uh, say, input on that and so that's one of the primary ones that ends up out of this process okay so just fyi on that this isn't the only source of information <coughs> yeah yeah yeah, yeah we, we have those boxes and we have the online um, entries that people made so it shares so i guess i have two questions about that um the survey the boxes and the survey are the same and are they these same questions excuse me are yes. they these same yes. questions yeah okay and where can we find it online? Is it still, still closed? If you go to the uh, Village Facebook page, okay. um, the link's right up there. It's one of the first posts. And uh, even though we technically closed the survey, it's still out there. Um, and so, you know, what I can say in terms of this process is uh, the commission is going to gather all those sources of information. Uh, everything will be included in a master list. Um, but there will also be a summary of kind of the priorities and the things that have been the highlights 
that will be presented to council. Um, so that's one thing that the Economic Sustainability Commission has uh, agreed to do. Well, a question about the survey monkey, and even the surveys that you drop off in the box, what prevents someone from loading, from loading it up? <laughs> yeah. Or well, that's why eventually it will boil down to themes, and this is only the beginning of the process because we're not exactly sure where we're going to go from here other than we're going to report back out and have another discussion. And I can say with the survey monkey, I mean, you'd have to go into the effort of different email addresses to do that. Right. And Susan, what was your impression yeah, of the boxes? I didn't see any, like I read all of them and I didn't see like 10 things in the same day. Identically the same, yeah. yeah. But you can try. <laughs> <laughs> I can write a box. <laughs> yeah, make your own box. <laughs> But, you know, the conversation goes on. So these are just some structured ways that, you know, we, we invited uh, comments and we generated data. But obviously, you know, we're all here together and just feel free to everybody continue to talk and find any way you can to give the input even if your mind changes between now and we don't know when. I, 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 have, I want to thank um, the uh, Economic Sustainability Committee for taking this on because this was a big, a big, uh, you know, thing. I was thinking here you have the, the village is now the holder of this land, and, you know, short of the well, going back to the 2010 um, work that was done, and that was a substantial amount of work. 300 people participated and and put their you know put their whole weekend down for that uh, those ideas. And they, while they are seven years old, I'm seeing a lot of them resurface here, and um, so I'm glad to see that you guys have taken the effort to find anything new mm -hmm. that might have, you know, uh, bubbled up to the top. And then, of course, somebody mentioned uh, what's coming up with the Jacoby um, land. Yeah. Yeah. So, so who knows how that's going to influence ideas and usage. It's, it's all happening so fast. And we're all, we're all good thinkers and we're all good feelers. So hang in there because this conversation is going to take a while. I have one more question. Um, so we talked about covenants that are on the land and that those are changeable, but I'm curious how hard of a process that is. Uh, honestly, I can't answer that because I've never done it before. I'm sure it's a legal process um, and I'm not sure how involved it is. I just know it can be done if that ends up being the wish of the, the village and the council. So that would be something to look into some more. Yourself or ask somebody else for help with that. And, and I believe that those covenants, someone who was actually here during that time period, feel free to correct me, but I believe that those covenants <coughs> came out of the earlier discussions about that property, and that's why they were put on in the first place. It's my understanding. Again, I could be wrong, I was not here at that time, but that's my understanding. So that's where they originally came. And uh, if there isn't any more uh, discussion from the floor, we can we can break up and adjourn this meeting, and people can continue to talk. We'll probably start putting chairs away. We <laughs> have to clean out the room, but you don't have to rush out. Okay. Are we done? All right. Thank Thanks you for coming. Forty-five minute public meeting. <laughs> 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 I voted to leave. Soaking wet, hungry.